Mozilla. I'm Shane Stevens, and I work for Google on Chrome. So um, we had the inaugural Browser Minicom last year, and what we said is that we wanted to try and have a venue for people hacking on open source um, browser engines in the area to give some talks about development work they've been doing or other standards, web standards related work that they're involved in. Um, and it was reasonably successful last year, I think. So here we are again. Um, so we have the schedule up here on this website, which is linked to from the actual LCA schedule page. There's some more detailed abstracts about what the, the talks are, if you care to select which talks you're going to attend. Uh, so, uh, in the session after lunch, for about 40 minutes, we have a panel. Um, we did this last year and it was kind of fun. Uh, the best part about it was that we ended up sort of moving into some very specific topics and generating some really good discussion on those topics. So we're going to try and seed the panel with topics up front this year. Um, here are some potential topic ideas that Cameron and I came up with last night. Um, if you have any other topic ideas, uh, feel free to come down and add them at any time during the morning. And then, uh, after lunch, we'll, we'll come back in here, we'll, we'll set up the panel, and um, we'll give the audience an opportunity to vote on which topic idea they want to discuss. We'll discuss it for about 10 minutes, see where it goes, and then pick another one, and just keep going like that. Um, do you want to go through the ideas? We probably don't need to. Um, no, well, we, we maybe maybe at the start of the panel session, we can just um, list them off and then see which, which one we to, to, to start off with. Yeah. All right, so uh, I think that's all. The administrative details. So the first topic, uh, first speaker, sorry, is Guan Yun Huang, and he's from a company in Seoul. I think Seoul. Yes. Um, working on uh, a WebKit port for consumer devices. Uh, so thank you, Guan. Thank you. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Wang Yun Huang from Company 100. Our team is working for faster racket engine, especially for embedded devices, such as uh, smart TV or smartphones, uh, etc. Such as uh, we are focusing on utilizing the GPU powers and multi-core CPUs in embedded systems. Today, I'll talk about the threaded, threaded accelerated compositing in Wacky GTK. Okay. Uh, okay, it looks good. Before I explain about the accelerate, threaded accelerate, accelerated compositing, I think I need to talk about uh, what is accelerated compositing. Over the past two years, Hardware accelerated compositing has been a hot issue. So almost of all web engines are implemented this feature. So let's see this example. Yeah, this example. It shows how to composite each layers in accelerated compositing case. There are content layers and leaf layers and background layer, and GPU can composite these layers on the screen. So this technique is called as accelerated compositing. In more detail, we can get the DOM tree from the given HTML page. And from DOM tree, we need a render layer tree to draw something by draw something like uh, text or images or DIVs or all of the elements. <coughs> and we need the graphics layer tree to accelerate compositing. In, in accelerated compositing case, the compositor uses the graphics layer tree to composite on the display using OpenGL. In the previous example, the content layer and leave layers are graphics layer. So asset compositing provides a way to accelerate animations, transitions, and three transforms using GPU. Graphics layers tree has uh, several properties like uh, opacity or transform matrix, so we can easily use the OpenGL to composite these layers onto screen. So 
This same has been done in Racket GTK. Racket GTK implemented accelerate compositing using texture wrapper. This which is a really lightweight scene graph implementation tuned specifically for the Racket rendering. From graphics layer three, it makes the texture wrapper, texture, texture wrapper layer three, and renders it this scene graph on the screen. OpenGL, using OpenGL directly. Uh, if you want a detailed description or explanation, I suggest you look at the Chromium documents, or ask, you, you can also ask Noam Rosenthal, who made the texture mapper. So, so the there has been the asset compositing, so we have improvement, the speed, rendering speed on the by implementing asset compositing, but it was not enough because the main thread of the web core is too busy to perform compositing. Especially in embedded case, it has a very limited CPU and GPU power, so it was not really insufficient. So the main thread has to execute layouting, scripting, DOM, networking, so there are no time to composite, in, especially in embedded case. Thus, we running the compositing on the main thread several limits the responsiveness and rendering speed. Here, of the after main thread, compositing appears. Of the main thread, compositing uh, means perform compositing on the Oh, where is it? Ah, compositing on off the main thread. So therefore, we can utilize multi-core, and by having separate thread, <coughs> we can bring a significant performance improvement, especially for the animations, such case animations, and zoom and scrolling. It also improves improve responsiveness of the user events, like uh, touch events. So this is our our overall architecture. Since main thread is doing too much work, we separate the composite thread and bitmaps and CSS animations and properties are passed to composite thread. And composite thread can play the CSS animations on its own, so there is no interrupt to main thread to run CSS animations. And in case of the touch event or scrolling events, zoom event, composite thread can run, can render that scrolling using its own scene graph in advance. And then main thread updates the proper viewport. So our requirement is like this. First, responsiveness. We want a fast response at all time, there is a user interaction. There are several user interaction in this area. First is the scrolling or zoom or click the link, etc. And then other user UI events like uh, back button or go button or address button. So we want a fast response at all time. And stability, especially in the Wacky 2 case, we do not want UI process to crash. We have to, we should avoid the UI process crash case and memory uses, especially in the embedded systems, there are so limited GPU memories, so we have to conserve it. And maintainability. Yeah. We should share code as much as possible with other ports so we can maintain it together and improve it together. So there are there were several approaches uh, already implemented for of the main side compositing. Implementation of the of the main side compositing in macOS uh, Safari, but unfortunately it supports on only macOS or iOS, so it is not our option. And Chromium compositor, compositor thread used by the Google Chromium. It runs compositing thread of the main thread of the rendering process. In Chromium, they call the rendering, pro rendering process is the same as in Racket's web process. So 
it is developed in it was developed in the wet trunk, but it was separated from uh, separated to LIPCC chromium compositor, and it is really tight. It is really tightly coupled with the chromium foundation, so we cannot use this. So it is not our option either. And coordinate graphic system, which is used by the and EFL. It runs extract compositing in the UI process, so, and it uses texture mapper, so we can think about that. So let's look at the coordinate graphic system in, de in detail. Coordinate graphic system is implemented to use texture mapper of the main thread. And it, is, it was first created by the Noam Rosenthal, who made the texture mapper. And it is improved by the EFL and QTX. In GTK, we was only needed one single text mapper layer because we composite the we we extract compositing uh, we run the extract compositing on the main thread. So, but in coordinate graphics, they need to separate another ray, graphics layer three to duplicate the layer to in the other process or other thread. So it, they made the coordinate graphics layer three. <coughs> coordinate graphics layer, uh, coordinate graphics is only used in the Wacky 2. So web process is the where the actual web core runs on. And they produce graphics layer three by uh, parsing the, their HTML5, HTML pages. And then it passed the uh, information about the graphics layer three and UI process creates the graphics almost, almost same from the given past information. And each layer has a separate uh, tiled uh, split into split into tiles so it does not show it does not what's that mm. so uh, Coinet Graphics uses tiled back install and it split the whole layers into tiles so it efficient yeah, it has memory efficiency because it does not render it, it does not create bitmap outside of the viewport. So good things is the memory uses. Yes, it uses tiled back install, so it reduces the memory uses and maintainability. Yeah, uh, we can EFL and QT share the same code. So also current GTK uses. Ah, uh, oh, yeah. But are you duplicating the image stacking store on both sides of the IPC link, or is the shape of the two tiled storage is those shared in the GPU, or are they actually duplicating the image storage on both sides of the link? Yeah. Uh, on there, you have the tile backing store on both sides. Are those the same backing store, or is that actually separate backing stores? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. The question is the, as I understand, is the tile backing store is duplicated or single one, right? Is the tile backing store the same as the coordinated backing store? Yeah. If the actual tiled back install is the used in the web core, and it duplicates the, this bitmap using shared bitmap technique. It duplicates the bitmap on the shared memory yep. on core RPC, and it creates the other tile, other back install. So you have uh, two set of the tiles. So it uses the double memory. Wow. Yes. <laughs> but it also destruct it also destruct redundant memory tiles, so it uses almost uh, Efficient, but it because of the we need the core RP, we need to interaction with the process, so we have to duplicate the tiles in coordinate system. Seems like you could use the shared memory to <coughs> share the common tiles. Yes, but in the in the case of the just for sharing single memory. It, it is really hard because the, in the Mac OS, they, are, they, they can the lock the surf, graphic surface, but there, there is no similar mechanism in the X11, so yes, that's a problem. <coughs> and, yes. Oh, restrictions, yes. 
first of all, it supports only Wacky 2. And, and the moving expensive work from web process to UI process, it lessens the original benefit of the Wacky 2 design, uh, keeping the UI process responsive at all time. And third is it is weak at GPU bugs, especially on the mobile GPU. There are several, several many bugs. Uh, GPU drivers are in mobile is really unstable. Uh, there are many hard to fix bugs in this area. <coughs> so when compositing on the UI process, it, UI process have to use the GPU to draw the actual things. And especially for CSS shaders, we cannot know, the, we cannot know the, the author uses, what shaders they use it, uh, what shaders are they are used in the web page content, so we do not have a safe way to verify this. So the UI process can crush it for GPU, so we do not want this. And so our implementation, we have implemented another of the main thread compositing, <coughs> threaded compositor, which is a threaded variant of coordinate graphic system. Threaded co co compositor compensates uh, the restriction of the coordinate graphics, and as well as benefits from the original coordinate graphics advantages. It separates thread in the web core, so it can support both Wacket 1 and 2. And also, we can keep UI process as simple. <coughs> and as coordinate web, um, compositing is done in the web core. Uh, only web process uses the GPU directly, directly, so UI process is isolated from the GPU bugs. So we can crash, we can provide a graceful crash method on this case. And lastly, we can benefit all the good things from the coordinate graphic system I mentioned previously. The main difference between the coordinate graphics and our compositing thread is the coordinate graphics, coordinate graphics performs compositing on the UI process, but complex thread is runs on the web, co web process, and it makes a separate thread for this job. So instead of the IPC, we use the message queue, and we can share the bitmap tied back bitmap, as you mentioned, that problem. And Wacky 1 and Wacky 2 will share the same code path, and almost all of the code paths, so it is really easier to maintain it. So, <coughs> our approach is to create a thread, threaded model in coordinate graphics. So, main thread creates the operations, and it passed by the IPC or threaded, and co compositing thread will execute this operation. For example, if there are create layer operations, uh, main thread, whenever, uh, whenever main thread creates the graphics layer, it creates create layer operations and with its data and it passes to web process, ah, no, compositing thread, and compositing thread makes duplicated layer. Oh, the only, uh, so, but it looks very simple task, but is was not simple for in our case because of that there are so many paths, so many codes are complex in coordinate graphics because we have it have a little bit history. So we should maintain, we should not break the other ports uh, code. So we need to use refactoring of this design. So let's see the demo.
Mm. Okay, this is the little bit short. Yeah, this is the wet kit I built it uh, last weekend, and this is the famous extract composting demo in wet kit. It is a uh, falling leaves. <coughs> so original version of this web page creates uh, only 30 leaves, but we have to compare the performance about that, so we made uh, 500. So it looks very smooth, but it shows almost 30 FPS. So, but... This is the, our proof of concept implementations on last November. So it is a little bit old, but it works. <coughs> as maybe you cannot notice the in performance visually, as it is still fast, but it shows almost Yes, 90. Because I turn off the fishing, so it almost, I cannot remember the, what was the performance previous things. Yes, almost 12. 20. Uh, almost, two what? Uh, yes. <laughs> two times faster, I think. So it is really fast for composting, to have composting thread in Wicked GTK. This is our data measured in <coughs> desktop. Since it is a proof of concept, it is a little unstable and it does not match the current code of the wacky trunk. But you can see the performance difference between the original wacky GTK and our implementation, <coughs> especially when the number of the layers uh, increases. Wacky GTK decreases hugely, but uh, it's, it's, it is the same in our case. So we are now contributing thread compositor to Wacket. This is our design document, and this is our metabug for this job. And we are actually, our current job is hugely factoring the code paths, several code paths related to extract compositing and texture mappers things. So after that, we are going to the actual, uh, contribute actual run loop for the compositing on Maybe the end of, uh, maybe next month. So, I think I should say thank you for listening, uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this conference. So, so thank you very much, Dong okay. uh, Any questions? So I was wondering, um, the rendering cost that you moved to the other thread, how much of that was cost in WebKit versus cost within the OpenGL fragment? Uh, sort of balance the profile. Excuse me? So the, you optimize this by moving a bunch of your rendering yes. um, activity into several threads. Yes. Um, how much of that time spent in the CPU and was limiting you is time spent inside of WebKit versus time spent inside of OpenGL? Ah, so actually the compositing the spans almost uh, 10 milliseconds on the ARM CPU, 10 milliseconds on the single render sin graph, to render sin graph on 10 milliseconds, and we need the, we have a time space on 16 millis 
16 milliseconds to achieve the 60 FPS. But in web call that uses, almost, it, it, it's very different because it fires so many timers like uh, scripting, uh, JavaScript to execute. So it is a valid for test cases. <laughs> but in the, what's that? In the, in the, what's that? HTML game, games cases, it spans almost JavaScript for five to six milliseconds at each frame. So it is really hard to match on the 60 FPS on the mobile devices. So, well, the question is, did you profile the system to find out how much CPU time was being consumed in the OpenGL library itself and contrast it with the rest of the WebKit application? So the question is, if we split the rendering inside the OpenGL library so that the GL library does most of its work in a separate thread, would that solve this problem in the GL library instead of in your application? Ah. I understand. So we, didn't, we did not profile the actual driver spaces. Okay. Yes, but because we are we, we do not have an NDA with the. But you, yes. you should be able to profile and find out how much CPU time is being used in the how much CPU time is being used below the driver and just ignoring what the driver is doing and find out and find out how much time is being used in your application compared with the driver because we're working on some stuff in the Intel drivers right now right. to split a bunch of the work in under the GL API and we're wondering how much of that is going to help systems like this automatically solve this problem solve some of this problem and how much of the additional work you are you're pushing into uh, the separate thread we're not going to be able to solve below the GL API. Ah, okay. Uh, in the Chromium, in the Chromium case, they split the GPU process to actually run the GPU on the other process. So it, it seems it's a really similar approach to OpenGL driver to a Chromium approach, right? Right. Yes. Well, that's a separate process, not a separate thread. But it's the, yeah. yeah. Uh, we didn't actually, the, we didn't actually Profile that, that things we think about that option, but in other case, uh, we have another case about that. Because we made the Canvas GL. We made it on a year ago, one year ago. We made the Canvas GL, which accelerates the uh, 2D vector graphics on HTML5 Canvas. But we first assumed, we first tried to use the GPU process on the Chromium from the Chromium, but we noticed that. Uh, Little thing will be the how we batch the OpenGL drawing core is the most that is the most 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 bottleneck the whole code. So we needed to batch the whole GL cores. So we needed to gather in the canvas drawing cores, and we made the automatically batch systems. So it reduced the times that that the separate OpenGL cores. And in the, the what's that in the thread composite case. It, I think it is matter on the how we optimize the scene graph to render on the screen. It is much big factor, I think. So I said about the texture mapper because texture mapper is actually it in this layer. So in other cases, QT guys, QT folks use the well, what's that? Q scene graph or Q graphics view. They use that, but it has uh, so many abstraction layers, so they could not optimize the whole scene graph to render this. So they made a direct scene layer to render use OpenGL. That's the texture mapper. So it is, uh, I think that is the bottleneck point, bottleneck of that problem. All right, so we might have to leave it there. Um, thank you again, Guanyin. Thank you.